What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video. Today we're going to weld up a nautical star from Precision Tube Laser. If you've never heard of them, you should give them a follow on Instagram. They do a lot of cool stuff. It kind of shows how their machine works. It's a tubing laser cutting company. I don't know if they do flat laser cutting or not, but the, the main focus of their Instagram seems to be their tubing laser cutter. And uh, this is a nautical star that they designed in 3D CAD and then had their machine cut it out. And I think it's really cool. All this stuff is really nice precision fit tubing. And you pretty much just weld it up. I'm sure their main business is a lot of industrial applications, but I think it's really cool that they uh, do these these weld kits. So yeah, if you're into videos like this and welding and fabrication, I hope you subscribe to my channel if this is your first time here. And let's get into it. So here we go. This is every piece that's included in the kit. It all comes kind of oiled down, make sure it doesn't rust. It's just like any other steel you'd buy or get right off the rack. So I just wiped it all down with lacquer thinner. I was debating on what kind of finish to go with. I thought I could maybe leave it just the steel, just like you see it, just cleaned, obviously. But I th wanted to grind it up. Sometimes I'll grind something with my uh, Scotch-Brite wheel and leave it just like that. And then also I'll grind it with the wheel and then go over it with a hand pad, which is what I decided to do with this. So right now I'm just making sure I get that weld seam from when it was manufactured off of there. Getting every piece clean, smooth, uh, real nice and shiny and then I go over it at the end with a hand scotch bright. Doing these tubes with a, a three inch wheel was kind of difficult since obviously it's a flat wheel and it's a round tube. When you grind tubing, you're supposed to go in the direction of around the tube instead of with the tube. But for this, I didn't think it really mattered. I'm not, I wasn't making a roll cage for a race car or anything. So once I had it all air ground with a three inch grinder and a 3M medium uh, scotch bright pad on there, by the way, I just went over it with a hand pad, same thing, medium, and uh, had it all smoothed out, everything looking nice and even, and then had to go back over it again with some lacquer thinner, just because obviously they're black and dirty. That's why I'm wearing these rubber gloves. My original plan here was to assemble the entire thing and then tack it all up, but it fits together so snug that I couldn't get the frame to actually hold a square. It just kept trying to shove apart. So I actually tacked together the entire frame, got a nice good square frame, and then worked on fitting all the pieces into it. I think it's really cool the way this comes together. It's like a, it's like a metal Lego set that's weldable or something. You know what I mean? The nice tight fitting Lego set that just doesn't come with directions. But it's as long as you have a picture, it's not bad going by it. There's only, there's eight points on this star, four long ones, four shorter ones. So, you know, there's only so many ways it can actually go and it's not too bad figuring out how it goes together. Once everything was in its correct spot, it all fit together really tight. So if it was kind of hard by hand to get everything shimmied to how you know exactly where it needed to be so i would just tap on the corners until the two points would line up and then i tacked it all together i start off welding the back just so i can get like all my settings right because i wasn't really sure what gas flow to use, amperage. I didn't want it to look terrible and have it end up on the front. So I'm just testing stuff out, adjusting the amperage, changing my gas flow. At the end of these seams, it was really deep in there. So you kind of had to run the tungsten out, start the weld, you know, coming up and then reposition your tungsten back to where it should be and finish welding it. I actually wasn't happy with the results I was getting right here, but I just kept trying different things until I ended up being happy with it. And I was glad that it was on the back. The actual points of the star I was originally worried about. Like I almost thought looking at this picture that I would cut those off and make it like a nice square frame with nothing coming out the outside. 
But once trying these, it actually wasn't too bad. Here I'm trying to mess with some pulse settings just so I don't burn it away and try and get some good color out on these points. Uh, the, a point like that is always hard for me because the gas just kind of spreads right off of it because it's so sharp. Here's a different pulse setting I was trying. I don't really like the pulse. I don't have a lot of experience with it. Uh, I'm not very good at adding material exactly when the machine, you know, pulses. And I don't know if you just sit there and let it pulse in between or what. I don't know what the deal is with that. I'd have to mess with pulsing more. Um, let me know in the comments if you use pulse a lot or maybe you're required to for some reason. I don't, I don't really know. I never have, never been told I had to. I know it's supposed to work good on thin metal, which is kind of what this was. That's why I was trying it out, but ultimately I ended up not using it. Here's a close-up of welding where the tubes butt up to each other. I have noticed that you can reposition your hand and cut the arc off and not really notice it on the final weld if you get moved and get started back up before your post flow stops. I probably shouldn't be touching the tungsten down like this. It kind of pains me to see it. It didn't really hurt the tip or anything because I'm very lightly holding it there. It's kind of more just to make sure the gas keeps pointed at it, but I'm gonna work on trying to reposition without actually touching that down. And here's my last weld using the old style gas lens because my Ferric cup finally came in. And uh, it just threads right on just like this gas lens does, uh, but it's much wider and it has its own little diffusing screen in it. So it uses your regular number 20 or number nine gas lens and threads right over top and uses the screen that's in it, plus it adds its own and gives you a much wider coverage area which lets you run the tungsten out a lot farther. They say you can run the tungsten out however the width of your gas lens is. So if your gas lens is an inch wide, you can run the tungsten out an inch, which is gonna really help on welds like this one. And for the first time, I started being happy with the welds I was getting.
that, guys? Well, there it is. The nautical star from Precision Tube Laser. It was a lot of fun to weld up. A lot more welding than I anticipated. It took me a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Uh, I had no idea how thick the metal was gonna be before it came, so if you're not that proficient at welding thin metal, I don't know if you wanna jump on this. It's not that thin, but it, it's not thick either. It doesn't take a lot of amperage. I think I was at like 70, maybe most of the time. I'm not really sure where I'm gonna put it. That's yet to be decided. One thing that was for sure is that ferret cup that I swapped out about halfway through welding this, that's a game changer. That thing for steel is definitely the way to go. That's what I'm gonna be using from now on, unless I can't get it into a tight spot. Um, still go with the regular style gas lens for aluminum, of course, but that ferric, uh, it was the FUPA 12. I know I already described it. That thing is awesome. I'll probably order more stuff from them. Depends on what they come out with. I don't know how soon my next project's not gonna be a uh, precision tube laser project, but I definitely will in the future. They're definitely worth it. They fit together nice, especially you don't have to do really any fabrication other than cleaning up the metal, which is really nice. It's just a nice project to weld. It looks cool. You could hang it up in your house, hang it up in your shop, give it away as a gift. I think I'm gonna get this clear powder coated and leave it just how it is. Uh, leave me any recommendations down in the comments if there's something I don't know about how to clear, how to keep it from rusting. I've spray painted stuff in the past and it ends up rusting. I've seen a lot of clear powder coated chassis and frames for like go-karts and smaller objects that turn out really cool and they don't seem to rust. So if you have any tips on that, let me know. If you've made it this far in the video and there's something you wanna see in future videos, leave that down in the comments too. I definitely plan on getting better shots at adding filler to puddle just because I think that stuff's cool. It is a little difficult to weld around a camera. I know I've mentioned that in the past, but I'm getting used to it. So as I get used to having a camera in my way and the tripod, I should be able to get some of those better shots. If you like this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already. You can actually hit the little bell next to subscribe and YouTube will send you a notification every time I post a video to make sure you don't miss it. And I'll be posting more photos of this on my Instagram. So I hope you go on there and check it out. I'm at Defiant Metal. If you order this kit yourself, I think Precision Tube Laser has made a hashtag. I think it's PTL Nautical Star. So if you get this project, post your pictures because I'll definitely be searching that hashtag to see what everybody else did and how they approached this project. But that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one.